yogis. Welcome to another practice with me um, at my home and you at your home. Go ahead and find a comfortable seated posture. So come on down wherever you happen to be and just sit in any way that feels good to you. Close your eyes. Let your shoulders relax, let your jaw relax. We're gonna spend about one hour here on the mat. And we're gonna set aside this time for ourselves. So just by showing up, you have committed to this time. So let's just clear our minds of all the other things that are kind of floating around in there. Maybe things you feel like you need to get done or maybe this is just the way you're feeling about doing your yoga today. Maybe you don't want to, right? So let's just clear all that and let it go. Feel how broad your collarbone is. Let your shoulders relax. Feel how long your spine is if you'll concentrate all the way from the tip of your tailbone to the top of your head. Let your arms relax heavy wherever they want to be. Good. Set an intention for this practice, a reason why you're here. It doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be profound. And just pause for a moment here, a moment of gratitude for your body, no matter what this body looks like or what shape it is or how it performs over the next hour. We're going to be grateful for this body that we can be here in this moment. Big breath in, reach up tall. Feel that stretch through the side body. Just continue to reach up, rooting down through your sit bones, but growing really tall through the fingertips, growing up through the armpits, seeing at the same time, if you can just kind of keep those shoulders rooting down. Another deep inhale, and as you exhale, let the body fold forward. Continue to stay rooted in the sit bones. Hands find the mat. Maybe elbows find the mat. There's the sun. The sun's gonna come out from behind a cloud. Let the head soften, let the neck soften. And just listen to the sound of your breath. So yoga without breath is just like, you know, fancy gymnastics or something. It doesn't do you a lot of good. You really do wanna concentrate on the breath. So try to engage with it. We all lose the breath from time to time, but really we can find our steadiness, our focus, our energy, our commitment through the breath. Inhale and sit up. We're gonna get some sun salutations out of the way. So let's start to move, lifting the knees, and then I like to roll over my shins, but you can swing your legs around. Find the length of your mat. And let's sit back, rest back into child's pose. Forehead comes to the mat if you want to. Knees can be nice and wide or knees can be tucked tight underneath you. So again, this is just what feels good to you. You know, elbows can rest down, arms can be kind of soft, or maybe that back stretch feels really amazing today. So just let the postures become your own as you move throughout the practice. We're taking a breath in, we're moving forward, starting to find a little bit of resolve through the core as we tuck our toes behind us and lift up to plank. High plank if you like, and high plank on the knees if you like. So just whatever kind of speaks to you today, either way, whatever mood you're in or whatever kind of resolve you've, you've given this practice today, let's find it. Nice and tight through the belly, drawing that belly button up towards your spine, tucking the tailbone down. Take another breath in, and when you exhale, press back, downward facing dog. Beginning to pedal the legs, working into the hamstrings and the calves, working into the back body, just kind of gradually shifting that body weight side to side. 
You know, if you're home and you're bored, push pause right here, okay? And go turn on some good music. Put some music on in the background and listen to me at the same time and you'll love it so much more. <laughs> Lift up your gaze, look forward. We're walking forward, bringing the feet up to the hands into forward fold. Head is heavy. We're trying to open up the sit bones. Now make sure that you're not feeling this through the lower back. So if you find that you're rounding, kind of hunching the back, let's go ahead and soften the knees even more, maybe even just to let your belly rest onto your thighs, okay? And then over time, especially as we move through the practice, we'll get warmer, we'll be able to get those legs a little bit straighter. Rooting down through strong legs, press down through your feet, Keep the back nice and straight, rise all the way up, inhale, reach up, mountain pose. As we exhale, and bring hands to heart center. Take a breath in, time for sun salutations. Inhale, reach up, exhale, forward fold. Big breath in, we're gonna find a nice flat back and we're gonna exhale, step back, engaging into the core um, plank position, using the core. Take a breath in, lower your knees to the mat. Don't let your belly sag, untuck your toes. Exhale, lower yourself to the floor in one straight line. Inhale, soft cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now, don't just push with your arms to get to your downward dog. Pull from your thigh bones and pull from those strong quads to lift your hips up and back to your downward facing dog. So I always like to think of the arms and the legs working equally, especially because, come on legs, you're strong, you can do that. <laughs> Lift your gaze, look at the hands, you're gonna travel to your hands any way that you like. One big step, lots of little steps, doesn't matter. Big breath in, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise tall, reach tall. Tuck your tailbone under, exhale, bring hands to heart center, do it again. Inhale, rooting down through the feet as you reach up. Exhale, folding the body over, forward fold. Breath in, grow that spine really long. Exhale, step back, engage the core. Staying on the toes, breath in, engage. Make your body one straight line. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, rolling onto the tops of your feet. Upward facing dog. Exhale, pulling back, downward facing dog. Listen, listen to your body. Where do you feel tight today? What part of your body is fighting you today? Let's see if we can be nice to that part of our body. Work into that space, breathe into that space. And maybe today is a day where we just aren't gonna have that battle. But listen, don't disengage from your body when you're doing your yoga practice. Eye gaze forward, feet forward, step, walk, or jump. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands come to heart center. We're going one more time through sun salutation A. So inhale to upward salute, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale to forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale to flat back, half standing fold, Ardha Uttanasana. Step back, plank. Utita Chaturanga and lowering down to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Stay. <laughs> Just breathe. You'll notice I'm still kind of moving and pedaling my dog. Yeah, I got my calves are speaking to me today, so. That's okay, your poses do not have to be completely static when you do a yoga practice. Lift the head, lift the heels, soften the knees, step, walk, or jump to the top of your mat. Big breath in, flat back. Exhale and fold, let it go. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands come to heart center. If nothing else, celebrate that much so far. Good. Sometimes I like to just take a second, sort of bask in that beauty of the sun salutation. I love that series. Um, I've been doing it a million times. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. And it never gets monotonous, and I don't know why. I mean, sometimes it's nice to just fall into routine, isn't it? Inhale, flat back. 
We're going to leave our right leg, your leg that is farthest away from me. We're going to leave that leg at the top of our mat and step our left foot back or the leg closest to me into lunging position. Now, pivot your back heel to the mat and stand up tall to warrior one. I find warrior one is a harder position than warrior two because it requires us to face forward. Ask so much of our hips, especially the hip flexors on that open side, to really work to twist into your warrior one posture. So straighten that back leg behind you, press through a strong straight back leg. See if you can let your tailbone drop so your tailbone's heavy. Try not to arch, make a short front body, and let your tailbone be really long. Now maintain all that, except for open up as you exhale to warrior two. But we are, we're still keeping that tailbone a little bit tucked and dropping the tailbone long behind us. So rather than thinking about tucking the pelvis forward necessarily, just let that tailbone fall like a plumb line and then think about engaging your abs instead. So instead of necessarily scooping your hips, can you just shorten that space between the bottom of your ribs and the top of your hips by a little bit? Nice strong warrior two. Inhale your right leg straight, reach towards the top of your mat and fold the body over into triangle pose. Starting to open the hips and open the right groin, hamstrings, hips, all that beautiful stuff. Give it some length. Let's take this left arm, the one that's reaching up to the sky, and extend it over the top of the head. Just letting that bicep come right up by the ear as we're gonna continue to look up towards the sky. An extended triangle pose. I think this is so fun. Completely changes the way that this pose feels. Take a breath in and I'm gonna see if I can just kind of sort of push out of those legs and cartwheel my way up. Now I wanna turn all 10 toes to face the front of the mat or face me, right, for your wide fold. Once you've found that, folding your way over, and I think today I'll just clasp my hands behind my back. So if you want your hands to touch the floor, that's absolutely fine. This is what's kind of speaking to me. We're gonna do a little bit of shoulder opening today. And so this will help prepare me. I know later on I wanna get a little funky with my bow. So if I start to open up the shoulders now, that's gonna help me later on in the practice to be able to get into that bow. Let's take another breath. Exhaling, releasing hands to the floor. Just use your hands for a little bit of support, turning your toes out and your heels in. We still wanna maintain that nice wide stance as we come up into goddess pose. Hands to heart center, or if you wanna take a little mudra here, maybe even reaching those arms out finding the depth that's challenging for you, drawing those knees back, using the glutes to work those knees back. Again, we've got that long plumb line of a tailbone behind us and a short front body, short abdominals. Inhale, rise up, find temple, and exhale, fall back open to your warrior two. We were just in that pose. The most important thing I need you to make sure is that you've turned your right toes facing the front of your mat, the narrow edge of your mat. And if you've got that, you're ready for half moon. So go ahead and connect right hand to the floor and carry your body forward into half moon pose. Just start to float the left leg behind you. See if you can float that heel high, turn the toes out, reach and open the body. Boy, we can really feel that right groin opening up. That's what we want. So draw the left hip back. Woo. Now you could land this back in your worry too. Those of you who practice regularly with me and you're feeling adventurous, go for it. I'm just gonna let this kind of fall to a forward fold. So if you're a little newer, you wanna do that with me, go right ahead, find your forward fold and then keeping that right foot forward again, stepping the left foot back and letting the knee just drop to the mat. <sighs> celebrate, okay? Celebrate. Both of your hands on the inside of your right leg. Untuck your toes behind you, soften that back leg behind you, soften the hips to the floor. See if you can work down into a nice low lizard pose. Stay where you are, have a look at me. If this lizard pose feels really tight, try taking your right leg away from you a little bit 
and keep your hands on the floor instead of trying to get down to the elbows, right? And so it doesn't have to be like super, super confined, super tight. Just let it be. And I think if you've practiced with me before, you know how to vinyasa. Make sure that you place one hand on each side of the right foot as you step back to your plank and flow through your chaturanga with an exhale. Inhale, up dog. We don't want those thighs or knees to touch the mat. Float, float, float. And send it back, downward facing dog. Man, we're off to the races. We're doing a good job. Let's pick up our left foot. Step your left foot in between your hands. Drop your right heel to the mat and stand up to warrior one pose. We're gonna do the exact same series now on the other side. Strong back leg, good. Hips, shoulders facing to the top of your mat as much as you can. Take a breath in and when you exhale, fall open, warrior two. Can you sink deeper? Can you challenge yourself a little bit more? Can you find that long tail? and maybe look to the top of your mat. Good, strong quads, strong legs. Take a breath in, straighten your left leg, reach to the top of your mat and fold over. Triangle pose, trikonasana. Try looking with your eye gaze up. Not only does that challenge our balance, but notice in triangle that top arm always gets a little crazy. When you glance up, you just go, oh yeah, there it is. Okay, extend that top arm if you want, continuing to look up. Press that bicep right up against your cheek. Push out of your feet really hard, finding that grounding, rooting power. You can hear this in my voice. This is work, guys. Now, you can soften everything, or you can stay nice and straight. Rise all the way up and turn all 10 toes to the back of the room. Your back should be to me and my back should be to you. Yes, we ready for our wide fold? Take a big breath in and then exhale your way down. Now this time I'm just gonna go ahead, let my hands find the earth, and then I'm gonna reach for my feet. See if I can pull my body a little bit longer. Stay where you are. The goal in your wide fold, guys, is if you're really tight, you want to bend the knees, but keep a nice long spine. So again, this is like the forward fold before. We don't want to scoop the tailbone and round through the shoulders. We want to keep a long back, a long spine. So even if that means our knees are bent, that's what we're going for. If you can get your legs straight, let's get the back straight and try pulling yourself downward rather than necessarily pulling yourself through first. Yeah. All right, on your way to goddess. Hands on the earth, turn your toes out and your heels in, sit. Draw those shoulders back, stack the shoulders back. I can see you, I'm looking, stop cheating. Sit down into that goddess pose and stack your shoulders over your hips. Draw the knees back, pull the knees back. Be strong, yogis, remember, we're not just here for flexibility and balance. Mostly what we get from yoga is power, strength. Inhale, rise up through your temple and fall open to your warrior two. You should be looking over your left knee. All of your left toes should be pointing forwards towards the front of your mat. When you've got that left hand connects down to the mat and open up to your half moon pose. You can see I've got a block here. And if you've got, you know, a book or something funky around your house, something strong you can lean on, a good sturdy metal water bottle or something, you're welcome to use that. And if you don't, go ahead and try fingertips to the floor. Just do your best with that. Okay, you don't even have to reach up. Maybe that back foot isn't quite as high. Do your best, half moon. <laughs> good, we're gonna go ahead. You landed in warrior two, those of you who know how. Just floating your way back through forward fold if you're not quite sure where to go. And then keeping the left foot forward, stepping the right foot back for a nice low lizard. Bringing both hands to the inside of the knee. Notice how I'm trying to work and soften that shoulder down to the inside of the knee. And I have got this really vertical shin, right? So you'll notice that I'm not letting myself, when I lunge in my yoga, I'm not letting that knee drive forward over my foot or my toes. Almost always, you're gonna notice, 
I have that really strong vertical shin and that matters a lot because we want our knees to last. We doing good? <laughs> let's skip the vinyasa this time, huh? No, it's never a good sign if I let you skip the vinyasa. Tuck lift, step your way to the top of your mat and bring your feet close together into chair pose. So we wanna keep our chair near the top of our mat, giving ourselves plenty of room back there. And then just go ahead and have a seat. Arms can reach tall, you can sit really deep. Hands could be at heart center. Again, we wanna try and scoop that tail forward, maybe let the eye gaze drift a little bit up. Here, Utkatasana, nice strong chair. Rise to mountain, pressing out of the feet. Good, and just let your hands come to heart center. So we're gonna kind of take the upper body out of this one for a second while we practice working through a little floating warrior three. So standing on your back leg, standing on your right leg, keep your body as straight as a needle. Only thing that's gonna bend if it needs to is that right knee a little bit, okay? And we're gonna try and find warrior three. Now, floating through that warrior three, straight as a needle, we're gonna bring ourselves up, skip the floor with that left foot, and bring the knee up towards the chest. A little modified standing staff here. And right back to your warrior three. So take your time, move slow, find your gazing focal point or your drishti, okay? And then, ooh, bring yourself back, right back up to that standing staff. And if you're like me, you wobbled and you lost it, it's fine, okay? Join back in. We love to fall in yoga class because this is humbling for us to remember we don't have anything perfected yet. Good. This time we're gonna rise up, come up, lift that left knee, hold it there, push palms to the sky and see if we can extend the foot forward for a nice standing staff. We're gonna land it in warrior one, so just letting that leg slip back and finding your warrior one pose. Pause for a second. Whew. Readjust your stride, bring it nice and wide. Reach up. Fall open, warrior two. Sink deep into the legs, turn your right palm up. Reach forward, reach back, reverse warrior. Viparita Virabhadrasana. And just catch that back leg behind you. If you're feeling super powerful today, that back leg arm can dangle, make your core, make your legs do all the work by themselves. <sighs> Side angle pose. As you come forward with your inhale and an exhale, you can place the elbow on the knee and go ahead and extend that top arm over the top. Anyone looking for a little bit more, just taking the fingertips to the floor. Try gazing up. Good, give your side angle one more breath. And then we're gonna move this into a side plank. So staying facing in the same direction and just sweeping that leg out from underneath us. Find side plank. Remember your bottom leg can find the floor on the knee or on the foot. This is up to you. Feet can be stacked or in scissors. We're just gonna thread the needle here. So trying really hard to keep the hips high and keep the hips facing forward, but then trying to twist through the waist. So threading the left hand under the right armpit and inhaling, coming right back up, reach tall. Exhale, thread it under, that's two. No, I think that was three, actually. <laughs> Four, good. Let's do, let's try and do at least two more. Hold those hips high if you need to, drop the bottom knee. Be strong, yogis. One more, one more. I'll give you a child's pose, I swear. Hands to the mat, knees to the mat. Sink back, relax. Anyone who wants to stay engaged in the work, you don't want the rest, take a quick vinyasa. If you're in child's pose, you got about three, two, one to get back to the top of your mat. So let's get moving. Chair pose. 
I think it's fun to hop. I'm really not very good at floating, but I keep trying and just thinking that one day I'm gonna get really good. Lift your heels, soften your knees, push down through your arms, keep them straight, and float. Uh, I could definitely do better. <laughs> Feet together, knees together, chair pose, inhale, reach. Do you remember where we were? What were we gonna do with this? We're on the left side, we're changing sides, same series. Inhale, rise, upward salute. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Stand on your left leg, drift your way back to your warrior three. Keep your body straight, keep the core engaged. Pay attention to how fast you're moving your back heel and try and move your chest in the same time. Come up to modified staff. Maybe you can lift that knee a little bit higher. Challenge yourself with the depth. Can you drop your chest a little bit lower? Good, that's one. And we did three on the other side. So this is two. You might be moving a little faster or slower than me. That's totally okay. On number three, we're gonna go for it. So when you get there, go ahead, lift the knee, press the palms to the sky and try to extend through that heel. Come on quads, hold me up. Work for it. Yeah, when you're ready, it's landing back into your warrior one. Back heel meets the mat, take a big scoop, reach those arms high. Exhale, warrior two, open the body, sink deeper. Hold that deep lunge, turn your palm up and reach your way back as you inhale to reverse warrior. Be really careful here guys. We don't want the strain to be in the neck. We just want to gaze upwards a little bit, but think about just kind of sending your chin forward softly with no clenching the teeth, no scrunching the eyes, breathing nice and easy. Inhale up, exhale, side angle, extend it over the top, try to look it up. Roll your top shoulder back. Broaden through the shoulder blades, pull them down your spine. Anyone who wants to reach the floor, find it. That left hand reaching for the floor, that left elbow on your knee is going to become your supporting arm in your side plank. So step it back, find your side plank, open it up, reach. Now start to thread the needle. You wanna exhale as you come under and inhale as you reach up. Exhale, hold your hips high, hold your hips forward, and inhale, reach up. Go ahead, exhale, remember, 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 this bottom knee can be down. And there is nothing wrong with modifying a pose for what your body needs that day. So work with your own body. I'm trying not to count, but I know full well, we did six on the other side. And this last one is number six. <sighs> this time you are taking a vinyasa and then your child's pose. So find it, take that extra push up. Come on, powerful yogis, move. <sighs> Knees to the mat, child's pose. You take your child's pose. I'm gonna wave at my husband. <sighs> he and my dog are just outside the window. <laughs> Come to this window. Guys, I have the cutest dog. I mean, this has nothing to do with yoga. But, oh, I thought he was gonna show you. I have the cutest doggy. Right now we're in the middle of the COVID pandemic. Let's get in downward facing dog. So my husband, who works in healthcare, has to come in the back door. <laughs> so that's what he's doing. He's coming in the back door. All right, find the middle of your mat. Bring your feet somewhere near, you know, the center. And I'm gonna turn to face you in the front, okay? We're gonna do our arm balance. Listen, after our arm balance, we're going to the floor for a minute. So let's put everything we have into this arm balance. We're gonna try and do side crane today. This is usually my classes, um, not a favorite, okay? It's not a favorite, but when you master this pose, you're, it's just awesome. It becomes so fun. So we're gonna do our best with it. Flexibility might be something that holds you back. Give it your best try. 
facing knees towards me, we're gonna keep those knees close and turn them off to the right, okay? So turn your knees to the right side of your mat and keep those thighs squeezing in, keep your feet together, keep your knees together, keep everything squeezing. Take your right arm and reach it up high to the sky and then wedge that right elbow as high up on your thigh as you can and plant the palm. We're gonna take the hands about shoulder width, but we want it to be a little bit diagonal here. So I'm gonna take this left hand out in front of me and I'm gonna make sure I'm on my black, black mat. And you can either sit your hip onto your left elbow, or if you've got that power today as you start to shift your weight forward, you're going to float your feet up off the floor, pushing out of the waist, pushing out of the hands, and bringing the feet up into side crane pose. Parshvavakasana, how do you feel? Are you saying curse words right now? Yes! <laughs> All right. <laughs> you did it or you didn't, but either way you tried, and that counts just the same. In fact, I always say it's almost better, it's more courageous, it's more impressive to try a pose you know you can't do, and you tried it anyway. Because, I mean, if you can do it and you're just to show off, who cares, right? Left hand, knees to the left, wedge that elbow in so that you've got something to push. Now, as you come forward, let the weight of your shoulders lift your feet up off the floor. So the shoulders drift forward and the feet become light. Squeeze those feet together and push your knees down into your elbow to float up into Parshva Bakasana. It's a hard one to talk through. Just notice. Sit for a minute. <sighs> Sit for a minute in hero's pose. Maybe you're still giving this a go. <sighs> this is a great little karate chop to your waist. So if you easily did that pose, chances are you're not only really flexible, great at twisting, but you've got strong obliques, right? Strong shoulders and if you didn't get that pose, it doesn't necessarily mean those things are not true about you. So don't beat yourself up over your arm balances. We work on them little bits at a time. Let's come to the belly. Lay down. <laughs> Good. Okay, so just finding that happy place on your mat. Feet close together. Arms reaching back, chest lifting, feet lifting, shalabhasana or locust pose. So look at me and see what we're doing and then look straight forward. You want your neck in line with your spine on this pose. So we wanna look straight forward. Don't look up, just a nice easy horizon. And if you want to, draw your fingers up your ribs, past your shoulders and reach overhead. Even deeper, more challenging shalabhasana. Good, let it soften, forehead to the floor, arms nice and soft. As you're ready, bend your knees behind you and grab a hold of the top of your feet. We're turning the palm inward, wrapping the fingers across the top of the feet or the ankle, and then rising up to bow. Okay, so I told you it was gonna get a little funky with bow. You're welcome to stay right here but me, I'm gonna try and roll my bow <laughs> off side to side, because I think this is fun. <laughs> and it's really, really challenging and hard for your shoulders. So be careful on this one, guys. If you have super tight shoulders and you are already really screaming in your regular bow pose, you are not gonna like this variation. You don't wanna hurt yourself. So just give yourself a chance to work regular bow, and of course you can come out of it any time, any time. <laughs> That's fun, you can almost like boop, pop right up into a bridge. Everybody take a little child's pose. <laughs> take a little child's pose. I've never thought of that as a transition before, but it is totally possible. Ooh. Rest the back, stretch the back, always working with both energies. Strong energy and then calming energy, sun and moon. We embrace both equally. Have a seat. Once you get to your seat, feet strong into the floor. There's my little doggy peeking at me through the door. 
reach back <laughs> and find the floor. Great. So just get happy on your mat. Find a place where you're good. Knees come in and legs go up nice and straight. Now point or flex doesn't really matter. I like pointed, but I just like to pick one. Okay, so I've got active legs, engaged legs. And I'm just going to start to softly grab either above or below the knee, splitting the legs apart and letting the legs kind of float into, I call these scissor kicks. I have no idea what they're officially called. I think they're a little more of a Pilates move than a yoga move, but I love them. So we want to focus on exhale. And if you're feeling a little more powerful or rowdy today, you're going to lift your head and maybe start to move a little faster and actually drop that extended leg a little lower. Everybody's working at their own level, so if you need to bend the knees, if you need to make the, take the head back to the floor, make it a little bit softer, this is up to you. Exhale, exhale, exhale. Really focus on strong breaths. Let's get both legs equally. Two, one. Beautiful, bend the knees, hug them in. You're not done, you got yogi cycles coming. We're gonna start the same way, nice and slow with our yogi cycles. We're gonna extend one leg, take a straight arm, and take it across the bent knee. Working in opposites here. Good. Head and shoulders could stay down, right? And of course you could be just here. Both arms bent. But I like to really try and take the elbow to the outside of the knee. And to take a nice strong rotation through the upper body, exhale. Exhale, exhale, and it's almost like a chopping firewood. Chop, chop, chop. There we go. So let it get cranking. Give it a couple. You can hear this in my breath. You can hear this in my voice. This is good work. Right and strong through the core. Four, three, two, one. Hug it in. Oh. What's one of my favorite things to say? That'll put a fire in your pot belly stove in no time at all. All right, guys. We're gonna get up to our chaturanga. You can get up however you want, but I'll show you how I like to get up. I like to cross my ankles, grab the back of my thighs, start to rock and roll, and I know I'm gonna sweep those legs out from underneath me into my chaturanga. <laughs> oh my goodness, what just happened there? Rewind it, you can try it another day, you don't have to do it today. Bring your feet close together near the back of your mat in your downward facing dog. Inhale your right leg high, the leg farthest away from me, and step it to the top of your mat. Keep your back heel off the floor as you rise up to crescent lunge. Take a breath in, reach up tall, take a breath out, Bend your back knee to your level of work. Inhale, rise up, and exhale, drop. It's okay if that back knee touches the floor. Okay, so there's nothing really wrong or incorrect with that, but we don't wanna feel any pain, and if that's too much of a workload, then don't sweat it, no problem. Maybe one more. Good, we're on our way to warrior three. So we'll just rise up and out of this one and into warrior three pose. Balance it. Take your warrior three to eagle pose, lifting your chest, crossing your left leg over your right. Have a seat and reach the arms. Take your left arm under your right in Garudasana, sit. Bind it up, wrap it up, let it be compact and tight. Now lift your chest a little taller, sit your bum a little lower. We're gonna let everything fall away with our next exhale into chair pose, feet together, knees together. Hands to prayer, good. Stay where you are at the top of your mat. You wanna be near the top of your mat, leaving some space behind you. I'm going to face you just so you can see. Stay where you are. Hands are here at heart center. We're going to take a breath in and take the left elbow over to the outside of the right knee. 
so that you are in revolved chair pose. Sit your bum down and back. Now I'm gonna join you. Uh -huh. Okay, and I want you to look straight down at the floor because we're about to rise. We're about to move. We're gonna perch our left heel up off the floor and shift all of our weight into our right foot. When you're ready, as slow as you can, as light as you can, you're gonna start to float that left foot back, reach back, extend it, and then let it find the mat. <laughs> How did you do? Pick up your elbow, bring your left hand to the floor, reach your right arm up and look up. Revolved side angle pose. I'm about to reward you, don't you worry. Bring your hands to the floor, drop your back knee, shift back to half monkey god. Lift your right toes, feel the stretch through your right hamstring, and notice how I'm keeping my hips up. All right, I just want to see if I can get this monkey god. I mean, we're in half monkey god, monkey god poses the splits. So maybe you are one of those people who can just pop right into the splits, go for it, okay? If you're not, let's just see if we can get it a little wider. So you'll notice I'm just working, I'm keeping my hands on the floor, I'm supporting myself. I'm just working that back leg a little bit more and a little bit more. And I mean, I have a secret, I'm holding out on you guys, I can split. <laughs> But if you can't, then just get to where you can. Leave your hands for support. Try and bring yourself up a little taller. There it is. There's no pretty way to get out of it. If you're in the split, just kind of roll and swing that back leg around. If you're like me and you're kind of somewhere in the middle, just sort of inchworm your way back, drag that front leg in, and step your way to downward facing dog. Good job, everyone. Feet are close together. We're gonna inhale the left leg, leg closest to me, up to three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the knee, bring it under the body and through to your crescent lunge. That means our back heel's off the mat. Inhale, rise. And exhale, start to play with dropping. And you can do all kinds of stuff here, you know? Hands can be on the hips. Maybe you've got like a counter close to you or a chair, the back of your couch. If you need that for a little bit of balance, use it. I love props in yoga. I think props are amazing and they help us get better alignment. They help us get better at poses we wouldn't normally be able to do. Breath in as you rise. Exhale, drop. Let's do one more. Okay, and on this one, we're gonna spring forward or float forward into our warrior three. Balance your chest and leg parallel to the floor. You can bend a little bit like a bow. You can bend your left knee. No problem with either of those. Let's go to eagle. Wrapping the right leg over the left. Oh, let's see. I didn't make that in one big transition and maybe you didn't either. There's no problem with that. Right arm goes under left arm. So we have right leg on top, right arm on bottom. Eagle pose, focus. Sink, squeeze the thighs tighter. Wrap the arms tighter. Yeah, breath in, rise up. Exhale, unwind, fall into chair. Sit back. I know your left glutes are talking to you. Stay with me. Inhale, lift up, twist, revolve. Your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Can you take your bum from here to here, try. Try to rock back into those heels. Yeah, look at the floor. Perch your right heel off the floor. Slow, 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 you guys, focus. Look at the floor. Balance your weight into your left foot. Pick up your right toes, reach those right toes back. Extend them back, search for the air behind you. Find it, find it, find it, and then let it fall to the mat. Good job, revolve side angle. We're gonna go ahead and lift up. Bring the hand to the floor so we can actually enjoy this twist and enjoy this revolved side angle here. How are we doing out there? If you have made it this far, you should be really proud of yourself. You're doing awesome. Left hand to the floor and right knee to the mat. Shift back, half monkey god. Ardha Hanumanasana. 
half monkey god pose. You want to stay here? You want to stay in half monkey god? Or should we leap a little bit wider? Okay, shift forward, pick up that back knee, inch it back a little bit, grip the mat with those toes behind you, get back a little more, shift back. Now, find the place where your legs say, okay, that's enough today, and then try and lift up. Now, make sure you're keeping your hands on the floor, and that you're not in a slippery place where you're actually going to slip into the splits all of a sudden, because that's not very funny. Use your hands. Use them for support, and just stay with this pose for a second. I know sometimes poses are uncomfortable. Just stay with them. Good. There's no pretty way to get out of it, okay? So shift back, drag that foot back, and step to your downward facing dog. Let's take a vinyasa. Let's flush everything out. Feet hip distance apart. Inhale to high plank. Exhale through Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Knees to the mat. Untuck your toes. Sit back onto your heels. Rest your arms on your legs and close your eyes for a second. Hero's pose. Feel the sweat on your body. Listen to the sound of your breath. Stay there or reach back behind you with your fingertips and pick the knees up off the floor. Ooh, did you hear that crack? <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one little stretch there through the ankles. Stay in your hero's pose if you want to stretch for the sole of your feet. Tuck your toes as you come up. Inhale, reach. I'm going to face you. You can stay right where you are. Doesn't really matter which arm. Let's go to cow face. One on top and one trying to loop up the back. Okay, so let's see what we're talking about here. We're talking about trying to make this connection fingertips gripping and locking and opening the shoulders. Now, watch that you're not arching the back. Can you kind of try and straighten? Go back to that short front body we talked about earlier. So as much as you can, it's going to be this lower shoulder, this front shoulder, that you're really feeling that in. So be patient. Let's change sides. And I'm tight on this side, so if you're like me, Grab a towel or your jacket and drop the towel to your bottom arm and then just start to roll that up or walk your hands closer together to work that bottom arm a little bit higher. Be nice, be gentle, don't hurt your body, but just try and work the limits because flexibility is like everything else, right? The more we do it, the better we get. So. And now the soles of my feet are starting to chatter at me and they have had about enough of this stretch. So I'm getting ready to move on. Let's do camel. Great, unwind from all that. Make sure as you come into camel pose, this is one of our deepest back bends and we haven't done a lot of back stretching. We're nice and warm, but we haven't done a lot of back stretching. So we wanna be careful here. Feet, knees are hip distance. We've got the toes tucked behind us. We're gonna press the hips forward and we're gonna to continue to press the hips forward. Rather than squeezing your butt really hard, I want you to squeeze in from your outer thighs. So the action of this pose is to press in from your outer thighs and to drive hard down into your knees. So let's bring hands to heart center. And we're gonna to start to do that as we press the hips forward and start to lean the upper body back a little bit. Now we're pressing down into the knees and we're squeezing in from the outer thighs. We're rolling the inside of our thighs up towards the sky. If this is a good place for you, you can stay right here if you want to start to search back and find the heels. One hand at a time, pressing into the heels. Again, we're still pushing down into the knees. We're pushing down into the balls of the feet. We're keeping the chin kind of elevated. So rather than just letting it fall open, 
Keep it nice and tall. Camel pose, Ustrasana. Ah, rise up, hands to the floor. Take a cat stretch. Round your upper back towards the sky and just shift your hips and shoulders side to side, working to those back extensor muscles. Untuck your toes, press into the tops of your feet. We're still in cat. We're gonna elevate the knees up off the floor. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> now, how high can you go on the tops of your feet? <laughs> Play with that for a second and feel that stretch through the ankles and the toes. Let's get strong, flexible feet, strong, flexible foundation. And you're just playing with this as much or as little as you want. When you've had enough, back to child's pose. One more and maybe two poses and I'm leaving this up to you, okay? Find downward facing dog, feet close together. Right leg, the leg farthest away from me, up to the sky. Under and through to pigeon pose, split the legs apart. Sit, sit tall, and then fold yourself to wherever it feels good for you and take the stretch. Look at my little doggy, if my doggy wants to come in. I'll let her in in a minute. Now listen. Do you want to stay here? Is this stretch speaking to you? You want to stay right here? You don't have to move. You don't have to move. But if you want one last challenge in our practice today before we complete, we're going to keep that left leg behind us straight. And we're going to move ourselves up and over into wild thing. Just carrying this right leg over the top, letting the toes find the floor and opening up into your soft, gentle back bend. Wild thing goes where it wants to go, don't force it. And everybody now to downward facing dog. Feet close together. Inhale, left leg high, leg closest to me. Exhale, lunge it through, pigeon pose, kapotasana. Sit tall if that's how your body's speaking to you today. Sit halfway or sit really low, however you want to be. And you can stay all the way down. And you can stay there forever, forever, forever. <laughs> or you can think about keeping this right leg behind you straight and rolling over the top of that into wild thing. No pressure to do wild thing, and wild thing's not a great pose if you have kind of tricky shoulders, tight shoulders, or a recent shoulder injury, it's not a good one for you. Notice how I stand on the sole of the straight leg and the toes of the bent leg, or just the ball of that foot. Downward facing dog, everyone. And a final vinyasa of the day. Good, let's stretch. Have a seat. Swing your legs out from underneath you. Staff pose. Good practice today, I like this one. Breath in. Back is straight. Belly button pressing forward, shoulders open, chest broad, and fold into your back extension pose. Take a breath in, lift up a little bit, take a breath out, see if you can soften. Everybody who's looking at me at home and you look like this, Come back up, sit up, bend your knees, back straight, chest forward, and then just fall to here. Okay, your hamstrings will open up. It's like the number one question I get, why are my hamstrings tight? And I say, because you're human. Like everyone's hamstrings are tight. <laughs> my hamstrings are tight. Ah, so be patient. Inhale, rise up. 
Bend your knees, lean back a little bit, a little bit of a boat here, and taking our first two fingers of each hand, we're gonna to start to slide that in between our second toe and our big toe, grabbing the big toe, finding it, and then starting to work the balance here. So what I really care about in this pose is not how, late, how straight you can get the legs, but I want you to think more about can you get your back straight? Can you press your heart through? And can you lean forward on your sit bones? How far forward on your sit bones can you go without falling forward? Okay, so can you bring your chin up and can you press your chest through and not fall forward? <laughs> I know, it's a challenge. Bring it down into bound angles, soles of the feet together, and round yourself over. I love it. Can we try it one more time? I say we go for it. If you missed it, I'm going to face forward, but you can face whatever direction you want. Start to balance. Extend. Now, if you have tight hamstrings, again, just leave the legs bent. Otherwise, play with it. Can you get forward just a little bit more? Can you draw the feet back a little bit more? <laughs> Love it. Bring the feet together, slowly lowering it back to the floor, and take your right leg on bottom. Now, either take your left leg over the top here for a half lotus pose, or if that's hurting your knee or your ankle, it's just a little too tight, I want you to just come to cross-legged, okay? So whichever one of those feels best to you, find that seated posture. Make sure you're sitting equally on both sit bones and inhale your right arm high. Exhale, take your right arm over to your left knee and start to twist. We're gonna let the left hand either support us back here on the floor or you can bind up this pose, and you'll notice I'm kind of pulling on that knee, inching that foot back a little bit more behind me, because I'm gonna come around and grab a hold of that big toe behind my back. This is one of my favorite poses to say in Sanskrit. I don't think it's my very favorite, but it's close. So I have a half bound, mm, no, I have a bound half lotus. So badha ardha padma. <laughs> close to one of my favorites to say. Exhale, unwind. Let's leave the legs where they are and lean forward. So just soft little walks forward. You don't have to go really deep. We want to feel this outer hip stretch over here on the left hand side. So if that's what we got, that's what we got. Inhale, come up, and before you take everything all the way unwound, let's just softly twist in the other direction. This is going to pretty much be it for today, guys. Exhale, change. Left leg on bottom, right leg on top. I really, really hope that this video finds you safe and well, you know. Left arm, inhale, reach. Exhale, twist. Um, I never really planned to do yoga from home. Uh, I'm coming at you if you're watching this. Who knows when you're watching this, but I've recorded this in the middle of the COVID pandemic. We've been um, home, quarantined. We're either on our fourth or fifth week. I can't even remember anymore. Find it if you want. But mostly my biggest concern is not, you know, when can we get back together and do yoga again? I really do want to do that. But my biggest concern, I just think about everybody. I hope you're safe. I hope you're well fed. I hope you've been able to find everything you needed to find. Exhale, unwind, come to the front, your supplies. That you have, haven't been lonely or depressed or sad. Um, it's a hard time. Look out for your neighbor. You know, give everybody that you see an air hug or a smile or something that you can do from a distance. Call a friend, send a text, write a letter. I mean, it's really hard. We have to be creative. We have to think of the things that we can do right now. And, you know, I am 
trying to look for the silver lining for the, the, the little gift out of this whole pandemic. And, you know, I really truly hope we all come out of this on the other side and we see the ways that we need to change our lives and the ways that we need to change our society and our culture and how we could be different if we just chose to be different. And I don't know, I'm a hopeful person. I hope it happens. Let's come to our back. Good. Take a moment here in wind removing pose. And I just want you to do in this, in this time and in this space, whatever feels good for you because you've got this time and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be quiet here in a minute and leave you in silence. And so if you feel like you wanna take a couple extra stretches here on your back and then move into your Shavasana, go ahead and do that. If you wanna, you know, just stay in Shavasana forever for a really long time, be mindful, listen to your body, listen to your um, heart today, maybe that's what you need is 10 or 15 minutes in Shavasana. Just some quiet time for yourself and maybe you only need 30 seconds today. So do what feels good to you. This is kind of the part of the practice where you get to make it your own. Your Shavasana or your rest does not need to be on your back. A really delicious way to do it though, if you happen to be at home and you, you're close to a couch with two throw pillows, lay on your back, bring the soles of your feet together, right? And prop one pillow under this thigh and prop the other pillow under this thigh. <laughs> and then just let the pillows hold your legs up. And I like, with that variation, I like to take my arms overhead. So that would actually be a reclined bound angle but oh, it's heavenly. Anyway, wherever you wanna lay, however you want to lay, find a comfortable posture for you. We're gonna quiet the mind, let our thoughts go away, let the mind be open, free of thoughts. Listen to the sound of your breath. Be present in your body. Be present in this moment. 